In this video, I want to introduce us to the idea of the eigenvector and the eigenvalue. And so these two things are sort of inexorably entwined. Uh, so you can't really talk about one without talking about the other very easily. And so if you uh, even took in a cursory look at uh, quantum mechanics, you may have seen uh, something that looks like, like this. And this is often said to be the, the Schrodinger equation, which we will get into in a future video. Uh, what we have going on here is we have an operator. We have two, well, what's the same one? It's the eigenvector and then the eigenvalue. And essentially what this is saying is that if we, uh, so this in the Schrodinger equation wouldn't be a matrix, but we can think about it in, uh, in matrix terms, which is what we're going to do here. Uh, and so it's essentially saying that we have uh, some some matrix that if we act on a a an eigen vector or a or a ket vector here, then we can uh, we can that would be exactly the same as if we took just some scalar and multiplied it by our our uh, our vector here. And so we would say that these are, are uh, that this is an eigenvalue of these vectors here uh, using this um, matrix right here or operator of any kind, which, as I said, we'll get into later that uh, there are more operators than just matrices. Uh, so geometrically, what this is telling us is if we have... Uh, if we have some coordinate system here with a vector in it, if we perform this transformation using this matrix on it, this vector will not be rotating in either direction. All that will be happening is that it scales. Uh, and it also has to be scaling, uh, it has to be non-zero. And so we would end up with, uh, so once again, there are three different things that could happen if we have this vector. The first is that nothing could happen to it. It just stays exactly where it is. Uh, well, I guess there are four different things that could happen. So another one is you could increase it. So you could scale it up. Uh, the third is you could scale it down. And the fourth is you could do any one of these things while flipping it, uh, which would mean that it has a negative eigenvalue. Uh, and so as you can see here, and if you've watched my videos on, on uh, linear algebra, when we are scaling this, if we are multiplying it by a scalar, so if we have some, some vector here and we multiply it by this scalar, uh, then all we are doing is, uh, is affecting the magnitude of it. As I said, we are not, we are not moving it, we are not rotating it in any direction. Uh, and so if we do a transformation on something, and I'll actually have the figure here from um, on Wikipedia. So we see here, so we have our, uh, our vectors like this, and then we, we perform this, um, we perform this transformation here where it looks like it's stretching things out. What you see is that these blue arrows in these uh, purple arrows are uh, only being uh, changed in their scale. They're the, well, the purple ones aren't actually being changed in their scale. The blue ones are becoming longer. But if you watch these red ones, you see that they actually uh, rotate, where if this used to be pointing straight down, is now pointing a little bit to the left. And uh, same with this, is pointing straight up here. Now it's pointing a little bit to the right. And so we can say that these blue and purple ones uh, are eigenvectors of this transformation, where these red ones are not. The blue and the purple ones could be uh, represented as just uh, a scalar multiplication. It would be different scalar multiplications between the blue and the purple, uh, but they could be 
they could uh, be represented as just a scalar multiplication where the red ones could not because they rotate uh, in the plane here. Um, and, so, uh, and so that brings us to the idea that we could have, uh, so if we multiply or if we operate on this vector using this, uh, this uh, matrix right here, uh, we end up with, uh, we'll call this lambda A here, uh, multiplied by A. Um, and if we do that, use that matrix uh, on the vector B, uh, doing the same transformation, then we would have uh, some other scalar here, which we'll call lambda B uh, uh, multiplied by our vector. And so we could think of, uh, say, the blue one as being the vector A and then this purple one here being the vector B and so we are using two different eigenvalues on them there. And so I introduced in a previous video the idea that these uh, matrices here are what are called Hermitian matrix matrices. Uh, and so Hermitian matrices and uh, and these eigenvectors and eigenvalues uh, have a, an interesting relationship that we are going to explore here a little bit. And so if we say that we have a matrix H, which is, uh, which is Hermitian, uh, and we are saying that our lambda A and lambda B, lambda A and lambda B are not are not equal to each other. Uh, so these are our eigenvalues, our eigenvalues. And we are saying also that, uh, well, this is basically saying the same thing as saying that uh, lambda A minus lambda B is not equal to zero since lambda A is not equal to lambda B draw that a little bit better, uh, lambda b. Uh, and so uh, what we have is the same thing that I, I wrote up here. I'll, I'll just write it again here as I go through this process. So we have uh, our, our Hermitian matrix multiplied by a is equal to lambda a multiplied by our ket vector a. And we have uh, our Hermitian matrix is the same Hermitian matrix uh, multiplied or operating on on he, the uh, the ket vector B is equal to uh, this eigenvalue lambda B multiplied by our ket vector B, and so we want to uh, so what essentially what we're trying to show here is that uh, the these eigenvectors so that A and B are orthogonal. They are orthogonal to each other. And so that is, uh, so we, when we have our, our uh, Hermitian matrix here, uh, we want to show that the eigenvectors of this Hermitian matrix uh, are orthogonal to each other. And so what that means is that, uh, that if we take A and do the inner product with B, that this should equal zero. And so uh, since we know that these lambdas are not equal to zero, uh, if we take our, uh, our eigenvalue A here and multiply it by A, B, uh, and we set that equal to our lambda B multiplied by A, B, and we want the, this to be equal to zero, but we know that these uh, eigenvalues are not equal to zero. Uh, so uh, we want to show that, um, well, we want to show that the, uh, the H is Hermitian uh, when, these, when this is true, when these are orthogonal to each other. And so what we can do is we take our lambdas and sort of insert them between, uh, between our ket, 
our well our bra and cut vectors here so that would be something like like this uh, and then we have our a uh, lambda b and then b here and what you see here is if these are the uh, the eigenvalues and we know that the eigenvalue and eigenvectors have to have this relationship then we can substitute uh, we could substitute uh, a and uh, so and then we so know that this the complex is conjugate so that if we uh, have this has to be uh, e the complex J conjugate times R cut R a, the R inner R product R of matrices uh, bases and and with then then we have a this here uh, which since will be like I said uh, this so is this is not essentially the identity so we don't matrix. take the complex conjugate then all of we matrix. have here is our that will be alpha. the same as and so this. these are the and vector so what we end up with is vector is our components a, uh, which is the like complex we conjugated up here, these are uh, the vector matrix these alphas here. Uh, and, and so B, what we can say here that is that are the vector components a, that uh, the alpha the, uh, the I the vector oper components are the, uh, equal matrix here to the uh, times uh, inner times B product, and then we see that uh, of if our we just sort of, of our uh, cancel out these A's and B's here. What we have is with our our with complex conjugated matrix is equal to basis our matrix, and vectors. so we know that and so uh, we take the inner have, product uh, of if our, our eigenvalues the basis are vectors, orthogonal and that's what gives us to each other the, uh, what we have is that's what gives us a, the uh, vector component matrix so here. that's uh, pretty much and similar to what i showed because um, before because if we uh, have like i said uh, in quantum mechanics we'll so be if, we, these if we have this matrices, then what we are doing and is uh, essentially we e also know that we are J, uh, getting uh, times we are obtaining one eigenvalue We'll call that from A1, doing one, our, that's our uh, first our operation uh, component and um, you will well, maybe hear here uh, up here like, like this, this if we so have our uh, matrix we will just uh, say that this is some um, vector uh, then that is equal uh, to uh, yeah so to we'll just our, call uh, this uh, eigenvalue alpha here one multiplied uh, by that plus vector and e, J, what this is saying is that uh, alpha these two uh, are representing uh, e, the, uh, J, the states, uh, uh, alpha, the states of alpha our system, three. and these J's um, uh, and these J's this be is one, uh, two. Well, this is three. the the thing and that uh, these, uh, as, as you see, are out bra of notation of here, which means so, they are the complex conjugate. Uh, well, but I since think, I think uh, uh, we are not using a little more uh, complex numbers to go here, through this, then they are uh, just so, the same as so the in cat future vector. videos. Um, so I'm we going just to end up once about, again with our alpha. Uh, I'm going to one, talk about uh, times things e like one spin plus alpha and how we can calculate two uh, times spin. E to uh, in terms of other bases three so times and e the same sort of uh, and so same, we just uh, end up with uh, applies to we just uh, end up like what we had up here and so uh, that's so, uh, I will taking the um, inner product of the I vector z, z um, with uh, with uh, the so basis I will save vectors. this uh, explanation uh, for and so, later videos but I wanted uh, to what else we can uh, do to here introduce us to this idea of the eigenvector uh, eigenvalue uh, since and sort of geometrically a, the important thing to take to away is alpha. that if we have uh, some, if we have an eigenvector i of uh, alpha, then all that's I happening times when we uh, e do this I transformation is that uh, it's then scaling uh, in some way. There is no, uh, there is we know no that rotation that e going on here. J, uh, and the other inner product takeaway with is that vector a has uh, equal to when alpha we I obtain uh, eigenvalues. Then we can say uh, that using this uh, Hermitian. That matrix vector a permission operator is equal to uh, the sum uh, over i operators of uh, outside of of matrices can of also e be permission and j. we will see that in action when we get to the a uh, uh, times, equation, um, 
Time and just as the, kind of a spoiler uh, alert, when you see the, the uh, Schrodinger equation, yeah, you often see the operator as being e as, ha- as being multiplied and then by an what imaginary we can do with number, this is just uh, sort of shuffling these around. We'll make it. Her we mission. end up. We will with get into that more in our, future uh, videos. Our uh, uh, the takeaway here is that uh, our uh, our I, eigen uh, vectors are orthogonal our, um, when we are using we have this our, uh, e this hermitage operator here times our that e is uh, i that is that our introduction here our, to um, our eigen vector a eigen So we I, said before that I hope this, this is um, the, uh, the clear identity enough, matrix, uh, and I will see. And that in tells video. us sort of what this is, where we have uh, in, instead of doing. Uh, this uh, we are instead doing so we call this the inner product we are instead doing this uh, which uh, you may have guessed is called the the outer product so this is the inner the inner product and this is the outer product and so the inner product gave us a scalar so this gave us a scalar uh, when we took the inner product, um, which we said, which as I said, when we're taking the inner product of our basis vectors, if i equals j, then the scalar that we get is 1. If i does not equal j, then the scalar that we get is 0. Uh, but if we take the outer product, then what we actually get is a matrix. And so what we can do is we can take uh, our ket and uh, we can say uh, that we have maybe e1, e2, e3. So ket is our uh, column vector here. And then we multiply it by our, our row vector here, which is e1, e2, e3. And remember, uh, that this should also be complex conjugated, but since we are only using real numbers, we can just do do it like this. And so what we end up getting, so uh, we just fill out a matrix and we start with E1, E1. So we end up with E11, we'll call it there. Uh, then we go to E1, E2, so we have E12, then E1, E3, E1, 3, then we just move down E2, E1, E2, 1, uh, E2, 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 2, E2, E3 is E2, 3, and uh, then we just keep going like this, just filling these out, E3, 3. Uh, and so this is the outer product using the bases, which as we know, are only one when these two are equal to each other. So we will end up with ones down here and everything else will be zero, which as I said, was our identity matrix. So that's one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. Uh, and so that we ended up with our identity matrix when we did it with our basis vectors here. But it's uh, you can take outer products with components as well. So if we had, say, uh, alpha, uh, we had our alpha, uh, we had our alpha i, and we took the outer product with our alpha j here, uh, then we end up with a matrix that has the uh, i and j, uh, which, as we know, will be something that looks uh, sort of like like this alpha one one alpha one two alpha one three alpha two one alpha two two alpha two three alpha three one alpha three two alpha three three and so that is our our outer product uh, with the components here uh, yeah and so that is um, that is everything I think I wanted to talk about in this video. So just to uh, just to refresh, we uh, first talked about our orthonormal bases, which, uh, as I said, are if we take the inner product of the of the bases, if they are orthonormal, 
then we will get 1 if i equals j, and we will get 0 if i does not equal j. Uh, and we saw here that um, we can uh, get our, our components of, of the vector by taking the inner product of the vector with the basis vectors. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, inner product of vector with the basis vectors is our vector components. Uh, and then we talked about the, uh, the outer product here, which uh, instead of giving us a, a scalar the way, that the, um, the way that the inner product does, it gave us a matrix. Uh, and so those are sort of the take home messages was the orthonormal bases, uh, the inner product of the vector with the basis vectors giving us the components and the outer product of of uh, two of a well between a bra and a ket gives us the gives us a matrix and if it's with the uh, orthonormal bases then it will give us the identity matrix um, and so I hope that this video was enlightening to you and I will see you in another video.